Welcome to Poland Daily History with me, Nicholas Richardson. And in this episode, we're going to look some more at Poland's early history. And I'm joined again by Professor Jabłonka. Professor, welcome. Poland's welcome. first King Mieszko appeared in the 10th century, and yet by the 12th century, Poland was beginning to so suffer some fragmentation. Could you explain what happened? And why? Pierwszym historycznym władcą Polski jest rzeczywiście Mieszko I. W 966 przyjmuje chrzest. The first historical ruler of Poland was indeed Mieszko I. He was baptized in 966, and from that moment the written history of Poland begins. His ancestor was Piast Kołodziej, his great grandfather, and hence the whole dynasty is called the Piast dynasty. Mieszko himself became famous mainly for centralizing Poland out of various lands, but one fact is the most important in his life. He had a son, Bolesław. He was Bolesław the Great. He cemented the whole Western Slavic region, including Bohemia, Moravia, Slovakia, the Elbe, even part of Prussia. He was called the ruler of Polonorum et Getorum, that is, Poles and some mysterious Geths, which are considered to be Prussians, Jadwings, and other Baltic peoples. This monarchy fell apart. It was at that time the Slavic Empire. A separate Poland began to exist. His son and then his grandchildren still kept Poland as a whole, but it was a dilemma, because having two sons always exposes the country to civil war. This was also the case, unfortunately, after the death of Władysław I, who had an older son, Zbigniew, and a younger, Bolesław. They fought a fratricidal struggle between them, because one of the brothers brought in external enemies, and the other one blinded him for it. The older brother died, leaving the younger alive. To prevent the dynasty from expiring, he was lucky to have five sons. We do not count the daughters, because they were to be married somewhere else, but there were five sons. Each of them received separate districts, or regions, at the time of his father's death. The most important son, the firstborn, received the middle region. Unfortunately, this brother was very jealous, because he had a different mother than the rest of the brothers. His mother was Ruthenian, and the other one was German. This is a classic illustration of the specific location of Poland. Brothers from one mother rebelled against the older brother. He wanted revenge and was cursed by the bishop, the Archbishop of Poland, for committing a crime. He was thus deprived of his right to power. Then the brothers banished him, and he still bears the nickname Vignaniec, that is Władysław II, the exile. It was only then that Poland was permanently divided into districts. The second son receives the land of Mazovia, where we are now, that is Warsaw, Kujawy, with Toruń. The third brother, Mieszko, received Wielkopolska, and the fourth brother received the land of Sandomierz in the south. The fifth brother was still a child, but he fulfilled the most important role. His descendants would consolidate Poland in the future. Eventually, the lands of the Polish kingdom would be divided into six historical districts. They are, in a way, still valid today. We would just add the seventh district, Pomerania. So the most important district was Lesser Poland, as there was the capital, Kraków. That was still the informal capital, because the formal capital was still Gniezno, where the coronations of kings took place. It was the region of Greater Poland. Between Greater Poland and Lesser Poland, there was a middle one, called Sierazland. North of it was Mazovia and Silesia in the southwest. Finally, the previously mentioned Pomerania, which was divided into two parts, was directly incorporated into Poland, that was Gdańsk. The western part, where Szczecin is, was the fiefdom of the sideline of the Piast dynasty, called Griffiths. Zachodnia, gdzie jest Szczecin, stanowiła lenno bocznej linii Piastów zwanych Griffithami. So, Professor, if I could ask, how long was this period of fragmentation and what lasting effect did it have on Poland, if any? Przyjmuje się, że it is assumed that this districtal breakdown lasted about 200 years, 
185 exactly. Such an ending event was the coronation of Władysław Łukietek, whose 700th anniversary we are now celebrating. On January 20th, 1320, the Archbishop of Gniezno put the crown on the head of our king, who was of small height, which compensated with a very high crown. From that moment on, Krakow formally became the capital of Poland. However, earlier the Piasts were not aware that they were tearing the homeland to pieces until the enemies attacked us from outside. There were three great invasions, the first one being of course an invasion of the German Empire. It has always threatened us and it has come to the handover of Western Pomerania to the German Empire. Boguslav was the first to pay homage to Emperor Frederick Barbarossa in Lübeck. The state of Pomerania was considered to be the property of both states, but with time it became fully incorporated into the German Empire and separated from Poland. The second invader was the Mongols, who struck the Kingdom of Hungary with great impetus. There they chased one of the tribes that was fleeting from them, the Powowce tribe, and ran into Hungary. Poland was an ally of Hungary, so this invasion hit southern Poland. Near Legnita there was a tragic battle, where our prince, Henry the Pious, fell. He was beheaded, while Silesia defended itself. For example, neither Wrocław nor Legnica were captured. The Mongols did not know how to conquer cities, but they rode their horses well. The third invader turned out to be the congregation of Marianites, which were the Teutonic Knights, brought by one of the Polish princes. They were crusaders who degenerated into Teutonic Knights or criminals. They committed genocide on the Prussian people, who they did not want to baptize, but they established an enterprise. Knights would come from all over Europe to murder these Prussians. There was an ideology which said that the not-baptized nation can be killed without regard, because they were not yet people until baptized. This was a crime committed by the Teutonic Knights. Unfortunately, when the German Empire invaded Poland, Władysław Łukietek asked the Teutonic Knights for help during the Siege of Gdańsk. The Teutonic Knights chased away the Brandenburgs, but they in turn occupied Gdańsk. On November 13, 1308, they carried out the massacre of Gdańsk. They murdered the Polish inhabitants and filled the city with their own. This problem lasted until the Second World War. Thus, they took away from the Kingdom of Poland not only eastern Pomerania, but even Kujawy. Unfortunately, the remaining lands united under these conditions, but they covered only three so-called Old Polish territories. These were Greater Poland, Central Poland and Lesser Poland. It was not until the Mazovian Piasts paid homage to our ruler that two more Silesian principalities were bought out. The bishop bought the third duchy, where Oświęcim, Zator, Siewierz, among others, are located, and regained Kujawy. That was all. Kupić jeszcze dwa księstwa śląskie. Biskup wykupił trzecie księstwo, między innymi Oświęcim, Zator i Siewierz, czy Siewierz, i odzyskać Kujawy. I to było wszystko. That's all we've got time for today this episode so it remains for me to say thank you professor for thank you your much. fascinating commentary on polish history do join us again on poland daily history where we look at the fascinating history of this exciting country